Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Finance Meets Real Estate. We have Andrew Bermudez here today. Uh, he is the founder of uh, Dixie. Uh, I met him on Clubhouse actually earlier this year. He had some very exciting things to, to share over there. And um, so his company has been, uh, well, it's a free online search engine used by uh, end users, tenants and buyers to find commercial real estate. It helps theory professionals generate more direct tenant and buyer leads for their properties. So he's a commercial real estate uh, prop tech uh, guy, uh, revolutionizing the space, uh, changing the space, trying to, I think, build the next competitor to WhoopNet, right? And like something better than WhoopNet. So we, we're going to see what he has to share with us. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to pass it on to you, uh, Andrew. Great. Well, thank you for having me and thanks uh, to all of you guys and gals who are attending. Uh, like Stefan said, my name is Andrew Bermudez. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Digzy. Today, we're going to talk about just some uh, interesting things and what you can do to increase, uh, reduce the time that you spend on the market and just really make the properties pop, whether it's office, retail. I mean, these are just really basic data sets, but it's unbelievable how many people just don't really leverage that information to really make their properties more appealing and outcompete other landlords and investors. So I'm happy to do that uh, and share it with you. Hopefully, my goal today is to drive value to all of you. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. And uh, if you see any questions, Stefan, let me know. I'm happy to assist. You can also connect with me offline. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter and it's pretty simple. Twitter's Andrew Bermudez, so at Andrew Bermudez, and that's pretty much on every platform. Uh, a little bit about myself, I am a former broker. So I breathed, lived, ate commercial real estate. So I was a partner at a company called Lee and Associates, which is a national firm. Uh, I started Digzy with my co-founders about five and a half years ago. And Digzy is a LoopNet alternative. So we're a free LoopNet alternative. We won't charge you to list property so that you can market your properties to anybody searching on Google for commercial real estate, whether it be a tenant, uh, an investor, a broker, a residential agent that's running around with, 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 a, with a listing or with a, with a search, let's say, put it that way. And we give you exposure. Now, the way that we pack on additional services uh, that actually make it easier for everybody to have access to those services and great pricing. So I'll be going over that with you. Uh, we are actually funded by the board member of Zillow. We have former LoopNet executives from the founding team that are investors in our company. Uh, the former CEO of Apple, uh, Gil Emilio, who is the guy who bought Next Computer and brought Steve Jobs back in as an investor. Uh, we also have K5 Ventures, Techos Angels, and many influential people. We also have real estate people who've invested in our company, including a large investor. So very, very in uh, the technology and real estate foundations to make sure that we provide the right tools and services to you guys and gals. So um, just to kind of really verbalize, because I think most people think uh, that my company is just a, a, a LoopNet clone. We're not. We saw the gaps in, in the market. And really it's much more of a one-stop shop for commercial real estate marketing and services. So think about it as a platform. Not only can I list and expose my properties to potential tenants and buyers on Google, but if I need, you know, professional photography or if I need virtual tours or I even need, you know, marketing assistance or I need somebody to create brochures, we're a one-stop shop for all of that. Um, if you don't see any of those functions on Digzy, please reach out to sales because we've intentionally not shown them in certain markets for one reason or another, since we're probably testing things out, but the, all these services and data that uh, I'm gonna be mentioning, you guys can take advantage of, or you can just go on Google. I mean, my goal is not to pitch my company. My goal is just to show you credibility and also show you data that you can go out and talk to your existing photographer. You can go out there and Google, you know, for virtual assistance, et cetera. We just try to make it a one-stop shop. So really the problem that we find in the market is, you know, when you're trying to move properties, there's just a lot of hurdles to move through. One's like, how do I find the right broker? You know, how do I find the right service providers? I need pictures. I need drone pictures. I need, uh, you know, a brochure. I need, I need help with this and that and that. And we've basically seen this issue. And it was just logical to create a free alternative to LoopNet because LoopNet got way too expensive.
aggressive for people. And then in that method, you know, be able to provide turnkey services that can actually help you leverage the data that I'm going to be able to, uh, to share with you today. So we bring everything together in one place. So that way you can just get on with your day to day much faster and focus on activities that have higher ROI. So one thing that not many brokers or investors uh, know is that 98 to 100 percent of the people looking at your listing online never reveal your, your identity to you. Uh, and if that property doesn't show very well, or maybe there's just, you know, they need a kitchen, but they didn't see a kitchen, they didn't see a floor plan, or there wasn't a picture of something like that to kind of open up their eyes, you'll never hear from them. So I'll data. I'm going to give you the data straight from LoopNet, right? This was taken in, this data was taken in January of 2020. So they tell us they have 700,000 daily profile views. Those are property views and 250,000 email leads. Now that sounds fantastic, but when you do the math, that means that only 1.2% of the people that view your listing will actually inquire. And that's pretty bad. That means that your property has to be seen. It has to be seen. So the eyes need to be able to like look at it a hundred times before you get one lead. And as we know, you know, the close rate of a lead in commercial real estate is anywhere from five to 10% on a good day. So that means you have to go through thousands of views just to get one lead. So it's, these statistics are very important. So if we take this 1.2% and then we basically take a look at what we've got here, right? It's Say for example, Amazon was looking, uh, Amazon or their brokers looking at your listing online, but they didn't contact because maybe they didn't know that you could provide the, the tenant improvement dollars when you absolutely could, et cetera. You would have lost this deal. And you know, how upset would you be to find out that your competitor next door with a lesser quality building got that deal versus you? You would be upset at your broker, you would be upset at yourself and just the market in general. So we take these uh, data points and we share them with you so that we can do something about it. So we can change the tune and change the melody of how things are going for us today. So instead of being furious, what we can do is we can actually take advantage of some additional data sets. So I'm gonna show you how we solve this problem a little bit later on, this 1.2% so that you can get more than information. Uh, but I'm gonna kind of go in, in chronological order. So basically, there's a few things that we do on Digsy. Now, a basic account, you can post listings for free, and there's some additional things. Like, for example, the Magic Link Capture shows you anybody that uh, is looking at your properties, whether they inquire or not. Uh, we optimize our search engine to, to show high on Google on the first page, just lead capture markets, we retarget searchers, et cetera. So one thing to know is that whenever you search online for commercial real estate, it is so unbelievable and it's almost really insane with the word insanity really, really bolded here that you maybe get a picture and a floor plan. Sometimes you don't even get a floor plan or a brochure. And most people don't know that properties, and these are statistics from the Association of Realtors, listings with 20 photos or more spend a lot less time on the market. So average listing sits on the market for 72 days. That's with one photo. Listings with 20 photos, only 32 days. If I could sell or lease my property in 30 days, I do it all day long. If you do the math, that's a 219% less time on market. So a reduction in trying to convert that vacancy or that empty building into a transaction. So what I would be saying, go find a professional photographer, get 20 photos. That's standard. They'll give you 20 photos, edit and retouch and make sure that your brokers or make sure that your marketing team is putting all of those pictures on all the listing services, whether it's LoopNet, CoStar, Digsy, whatever. It helps so much and you have no idea the number one complaint that we hear from tenants and buyers searching online is that nobody posts pictures and this can make your property pop and more likely to inquire and you can help, uh, you can help move much faster. Just look at this number, 219%. So whoever you're vendor is for, for, for photographs, have them take great looking pictures. Now that's one thing there. So just have them take pictures like this, right? And then, you know, make sure to have pictures in the interior. So I have an example here of some of the work we do. So for example, look at this, you know, the pictures just pop, they're just beautiful, right? It looks like something out of a magazine. This is what you want to make sure your photographers are doing. And look at that, even a warehouse just looks just so gorgeous. Right, you want to be able to do that, and don't forget to include floor plans. It, that, that's that's huge for a lot of people. So the thing is, just make your properties look killer with great, great photography. Yes. Like one of the bigger companies in the prop tech space recently, Matterport, right? Yes. Uh huh. 
would be um, how what is the effect of having a Matterport Matterport on your property? We're going to go over that right now. <laughs> So we also do Matterport nationwide. All these services I'm mentioning, uh, we, we provide nationwide. So those are 3D virtual tours powered by Matterport. And basically these 3D tours, you can put a link on your brochure, whether it's a PDF, you can put them online on listing services and you can like spread them all over the internet. And basically what these things do is they actually have, Matterport has proven that properties with a virtual tour spend 31% less time on the market. So imagine that in combination with pro photos, you can have this stuff here. And they also increase property tours by 40%. So imagine if just by doing a virtual tour, you're able to get 40% more traffic, spend less time on the market and do that. These are all numbers. So contact your vendor. If you don't have what, reach out to us. And just to give you an idea for those of you that haven't seen what a Matterport looks like before, we'll go ahead and click one right here. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, um, and uh, share this with, um, I'll share this presentation with Stefan so you guys can grab it uh, a little bit later. So let's say, for example, let's go ahead and click on this. And this is basically it. You got a nice little dollhouse and then the broker or the searcher can come in here. We actually put these little uh, call outs right here. So that way you can view, let's say the building lobby. You can get a feel for the building lobby, see what it looks like, right? And go back into the spot as well. So we can go ahead and go back to suite 140. And then you can actually walk through the space, which is just great. And then there's other things that I won't bore you with. Like you can see the outdoor amenities, et cetera. You can see the gym that they have here, fitness center, but I can actually walk through the space and actually take a look. And just having this will make your property so much more appealing just to people because it's so much easier to make a decision when you have 3D virtual tours about a property or not. There's also, you know, things that people go, well, you know what, my property doesn't show that well. Well, then just put photographs, just get a photographer to just make them look really, really good. And that way you can actually make your property stand out and you can outperform other landlords. So this gives you an idea of what a 3D virtual tour looks like. The, we're going to back in the presentation here. <clears throat> now I'm going to give you the numbers behind this. So 31% less time on markets. Awesome. 40% increase in property tours. That's from brokers and tenants themselves. And then at the same time, what we can do is we can go ahead and let me just find where my presentation is. There we go. <clears throat> um, if you're an agent attending this, just know that uh, Agents who actually have virtual tours in their arsenal and when they are actually pitching listings, they actually uh, win 74% more listings because of it. So it's just really, really good stuff. I mean, if you have a, a virtual tour on your pitch presentation to get that listing, go have it. If you don't have one, you can reach out to us. We'll give you one what we've done before. And then after you get the listing, you guys can, uh, you guys can order one through us. Now, the one problem with virtual tours that I will mention, photography can be very expensive. Um, we actually start at $225 per project and we give you 20 edited pictures like the ones that I showed you. The problem with the virtual tours has been this, it has been cost. It's extremely cost prohibitive. Um, the, these virtual tours cost anywhere on the market rate that a photographer will quote you is anywhere from 11 cents a square foot to 17 cents a square foot. So that's very expensive. If you take a look at basically, let's say a 10,000 square foot space, how much is it gonna cost me? 1100 to $1,700. If I'm a broker, I don't make enough commission on that space, especially if it's a lease, to be able to justify making that investment. So what we at Digsy did is we worked for the past year and a half on figuring out how to provide a phenomenal product at a very affordable cost. And as you can see, I'm glad to say that with us, that 10,000 square footer, instead of paying, <laughs> can't talk, instead of paying 1,700 bucks a button, it's $440 no joke, it's $440. And we have our team go out to your property anywhere in the United States. And within an hour or two, depending on the size of the building, we'll produce a, a virtual tour like I showed you. Here's one that we actually just shot. This is an, uh, a 10,000 square footer for $440. So as you can see, you can actually come in here and you can take a look at the space. You can go ahead and walk around. If you wanna look at the outside of the building, like I mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and do that. So let's go take a look at that so you can see how beautiful the building is. So enough pitching of that. Now you wanna make sure that if your vendor is quoting you that 15 to, or 11 cents or 17 cents a foot, go ahead and call us. We'll take care of you because that's too expensive. And also on our price sheet, which is very transparent, if a space 1500 square feet and below, it's only $150. 
but keep in mind these increase uh, these increase physical tours by 40 percent and you also have a 31 percent uh reduction in the amount of time that you uh spend on the market trying to market that property now one thing that we recently added to to our services is like hey look we have the digsy tools etc cetera, etc cetera, and i'll go into those into a minute but it's like i don't have enough time to to do all these things can you guys help me with the marketing and I'm happy to say that earlier this year, we actually rolled out um, a service where you can actually outsource your marketing activities to our team. So for $10 an hour. So what we do is, you know, if you need help answering listing inquiries, our team will do it. If you need help putting prospect reports, we'll do it. If you need somebody to create marketing collateral for brokers or people in your office, we got you. If you need cold calling, we got you. If you need admin work, online marketing, social media marketing, email blast, we got you. Now, for those of you that actually represent tenants, investors, and buyers, uh, and you need, for example, you run a, a survey on any platform, whether it's Digsy Coast or anything else, and you need somebody to call on those availabilities and confirm that it's still available, floor plan, touring instructions, et cetera, our team will do that for you. And we've got part-time and full-time uh, people who can help unload a lot of this stuff and do it professionally for $10 an hour. So. One of the things that I'm going to mention, I'm going to go back to the beginning, right? If only 1% of the people who view my listing um, actually inquire. Now, I've increased that by learning that, you know, I can reduce my time on market with great photography by 220%. I can also increase property tours by 40%. With virtual tours, I can also reduce my time on market uh, 31% in addition to the 220% uh, with photos. Now, we have things that can actually elevate that 1%. Even if, for example, you guys don't get professional photography, you guys don't get virtual tours, we have tools in the Digsy platform. Now, this is a premium feature. Premium accounts are $59 a month. And it's basically any brochure, floor plan, or access to the listing will be put behind a, a lead capture form. So the person who's trying to access that brochure, floor plan, whatever asset has to enter their first name, last name, and phone number, our system pings the telecom companies to verify that it's a, it's a real live phone number, and then they have to verify their email address. So that way, in order to unlock that information, they have to access it. Now, they have to give that. So usually, if you know you have 10 people hitting the website, on average, what we've seen is anywhere between three to six people are actually filling in this form. So you just went from getting one lead for every 100 to getting four to six leads. So this is a lead capture form. We cutely call it the magic link. Uh, another thing that we uh, also do is you can also share all this stuff on social media or even email. Just link the brochure to that magic link that I sent you, and they're going to have to enter their information so they can get access and get phone number, email, uh, be that instead of missing Amazon, you saw that Amazon looked at the building and you call that person right away. And now you get that tenant instead of your uh, neighbor getting that, um, getting that tenant and then you finding out and being furious about it. Uh, you can also share all that stuff on social media. So if you've got social media marketing teams or you do it on your own, you can actually go ahead and show that there. Um, one other thing that our tool lets you do is it allows you to embed your listings on your website, right? So you can show only your listings or you can show all the listings uh, that are on the Digsy network and we're nationwide. So that way, this is similar to what you see in residential, where you go to a residential agent's page and it's not only showing their listings, but everything on the market. So that way they've got, you can actually buy Google ads or things like that, or drive traffic through social. And if somebody inquires, let's say on one of the properties, uh, because it's gonna ask them for their information, now you got a lead that you wouldn't have always had before. And you can cross sell them different uh, properties, or you can just have it default to just, your, your properties. So I'll give you an example of somebody using that. So there's a company out here in Orange County, California called Topside Real Estate. When you click on search listings, you click here and it's all their own branding. And then this is the Digsy uh, widget powering. They're showing all listings on the market. And then if somebody inquires on this listing, they get the lead. So pretty cool stuff to generate more leads of people looking for space. Um, let me take a look here. Um, there's an example on how we rank on Google. So if somebody types in warehouse for rent, let's say whatever city, I did the example here in Irvine, we rank really high on Google. So for example, you'll see an ad, 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 right below LoopNet is Digsy. So people will go there and then just start looking at your properties. And like I mentioned, it's free to list on our website. Um, the other thing too that I mentioned is anytime that somebody access, uh, accesses a, a listing on our website, 
um, the system will automatically um, capture their information. Now, if um, they have not registered, let's say, or if they've registered in the past, they won't see this, but you'll get notified that John Doe looked at this, here's his phone number, here's his email address. It's only people that haven't registered for a free account that, that get this here. So that way we remove that friction. Uh, our goal is just to drive as many leads as possible and help you not miss a deal because they didn't inquire. Also, for those interested, uh, the system can, when somebody is looking at your listing, the system will automatically do a little pop up that asks them, hey, you know, what are you looking for? Can I save you some time? And they can click on that and they can give you the requirements so that you can see if you can put a deal together for that. And here's a sample. So the system will automatically send you an email saying, hey, Frank Gonzalez unlocked pricing. So we put pricing brochures, virtual tours, everything. Uh, behind um, behind that lead capture form uh, for people that are, A, are not signed into their accounts or people B, who haven't registered for a free account. But then that way, as soon as they look at it, then you see that Frank's unlocked this for this listing and here's our contact information. You can reach out to them and close some, uh, some business. Um, one thing that our engine does is that we notice uh, in order to make sure that we help you not miss a deal is you could list a property, let's say that 10,000 square footer. Uh, let's say uh, we list a 10,000 square foot office space or industrial space or whatever in the market today. But the person who was searching for that property came in yesterday. Uh, we otherwise, unless they come back, they wouldn't see it. So what our system does, it automatically, uh, you know, kind of queries the database every 24 hours and says, hey, uh, John just listed this 10,000 square footer and Wendy's looking for a property around that size range, uh, you know, yesterday. So it's going to basically send them email saying, hey, by the way, you may want to take a look at John's property because based on your search criteria, their searches you ran yesterday, it seems to be a good fit. So it gives you additional exposure. So the system's basically just retargeting uh, searchers to try to give you as much uh, exposure as possible. So this is one of the example. Hey, Andrew, check out new properties matching your search and then right here, for example, right? So let's pretend instead of being this little tiny space, it's a 10,000 square footer that John put together. So that's pretty much it. Um, the, the main thing is, you know, just to kind of go is make sure that whenever possible, you are, uh, you're working against this number right here. If only 1% of the people are inquiring on a property and that's statistical, um, you want to make sure that you try to get their information. So put stuff behind a wall at, at any moment you can. You want access to pricing? Give me your information. You want access to virtual tours? Give me your information. You want access to the brochure? Give me your information. And at the same time, uh, just make it, once they've already signed in or if they've signed in before, make it really easy for them to do that. Uh, the magic link, by the way, works. Uh, it doesn't have to be only to a listing on Digzy. As long as your brochure is on Digzy, Digsy will automatically give you a magic link that will put that content behind a lead capture so you can embed that link on an email blast, social media, et cetera, so you don't miss a deal. And then just like I mentioned, it's going to be basic stuff. Make the properties pop. Just really invest the money in getting professional photography. And don't just put in one picture. Put in 20, 30. The more pictures, the better, right? It's so funny. I talked to many people in the industry, and we always joke that, isn't it funny that we try to rent a $300 um, hotel in Vegas and we get virtual tours, pictures, and way more data. We get all the information, but we go try to spend $10,000 a month in commercial real estate and we get a picture and maybe a floor plan. If, if we're asking these rents, which are immense, Let's make sure that they just see how killer the properties are and give them more and more content because they're more likely, A, to engage with you and inquire on the property, but two, reduce your amount of time in the market by 200%, just great. And then if you guys want virtual tours, if you have somebody you know, that can actually help you, you know, shoot these so that you get more uh, people touring your properties, 40% of them, if you want to win more listings, et cetera, just make sure that you find somebody that's not going to be charging you an arm on a leg. 11 cents to 17 cents a foot is just too expensive. Try to find somebody uh, like Dig Z so you're not spending $1,700 on there. You're spending $440. And yes, we are profitable on this, just so you know. We've actually built the business around great economics on here because a lot of people can't believe this. We actually have phenomenal margins on this and it's simply because we cracked it. We were able to make these things affordable from one central place. So with that being said, simple, 
use the metrics, work against 1% uh, inquiry rates, make the properties pop so you can spend you know, way less time on the market and just make sure that you try to get more viewings by installing virtual tours. And that's all I got for you guys today. I'm not sure if we have any questions. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Andrew. That's that's really great. That those are pretty crazy numbers over there, right? And no, nobody talk. That's the problem. Nobody talks about them. Nobody. I, I have yet to talk to a broker or a property owner that ever brings these numbers up. Yeah, I have a question actually. On um, I was curious, like for your business model in comparison to WoopNet or Craxy or I guess. So what would be, let's say, like in terms of your business model, in terms of sourcing your listings versus them, is it similar? Like, do they do like all these three companies source their listings in a similar way? Yeah, it's tough. Wait, basically, our teams reached out to all the brokerages uh, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to to get to get their listings on our platform. Everybody does it the same way. There's not one central source. Um, what's different with us is that we are trying to create a, like a more open platform because we don't sell access to the listings. We provide that prop that, that for free so that people can get that. We monetize on the additional services, right? Like help, like providing you outsourced marketing assistance or, uh, or uh, virtual tours, photography, all that other stuff. And our coupon rates much higher uh, simply because we're basically using Digzy as a way to get people knowing about Digzy and provide access to that information for free. Our coupon rate, because the services are much higher, are much higher than 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 just charging somebody sixty bucks a month to access listing data. So, what about off-market data? Is that something like uh, that has been viable or not, <laughs> or it's sensibly just reaching to the brokerage still, right? They you know, it, it's tough. I mean, most brokers don't want to put stuff on the market. Uh, for for various reasons, and some investors don't want it to hit the market for obvious reasons. So, um, it's there's people that have tried to create services or or websites around off market listings, but it kind of def defies the purpose, right? If it's off market and it goes on a website, then it's on market. So uh, I have yet to see somebody that ha that cracks that problem. I see, but could it be like sort of? you know, the growth of social media and sort of like having like some of some data leak out and sort of, you know, like picking on that data, posting it out. Is that a feasible model potentially for the future? Like where, you know, if something pops up anywhere on the internet and it will suddenly become on market sort of, you know, like a, a gradual like reduction in off markets stuff. You, you know, it's a very good question. I haven't given it much thought. So I have to think Andrew? about it and get back to you on that. See Andrew, I'll, give, I'll give you my I'll give you my two cents. An off-market listing is like a pocket listing in residential real estate. In many cases, you have a private seller who doesn't want the hassle of exposure. Number one, number two, you have a self-serving listing agent that can create value in the seller's market. Okay, but defies logic of uh, defies the logic of exposing a reasonable asset to a reasonable market for a reasonable amount of time. And certain specialty investment properties don't qualify for that because they need to be specially sold. You know, so the off-market high-end investment properties that virtually no broker gets um, are shot by the highest, you know, to the highest uh, uh, qualified buyers. But the average, you know, under ten million dollar commercial listing, you're doing your seller a disservice by not shopping into the marketplace in my opinion, but I'm, a, yeah. you know, and that's, and all the things you said are terrific. I can, you know, to say, to comment on your presentation, you know, I've invested a couple of times with your, you know, the photography and the Matterport stuff and it's terrific time sensitive, you know, obviously cost competitive, you know, to the competition and done really well. <laughs> so thank you, Mark. I appreciate the vote of confidence. Thank you for being a customer. Um, <laughs> So Mark, sorry to interrupt. Like, so what was the cutoff there? So under 10 million, so it would, under 10 million sort of would be recommended to be put out on in the open, you know, in the well, public market. I've, I've sold properties, I've sold $100 million properties to $500,000 properties. I expose everything, okay? I'm giving you an example of a benchmark of Orange County, you know, a $10 million office or industrial property, you need to share, you need to show that to the marketplace, in my opinion, okay? Um, 
yeah. even complicated investment. So anything up to 10 million, you were saying anything up to 10 million, that's sort of yeah. your. Yeah, it's, just, it's just a ballpark. It's just a ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, understood, understood. So Tina Chong had a question. Um, Tina, our offices are in Orange County, California, uh, not Orange County, Florida. Uh, that's where our headquarters are. Uh, but our team of uh, photographers and um, our marketing, uh, our people that help with marketing are all, are all over the US. So we, we, we expanded and scaled that out uh, about a year and a half ago. It was, was a lot of work, uh, but we cover all markets in case you're going in that direction. But headquarters is in Orange County, California. Uh, Chris Garzino, you would ask, uh, if Digsy is only for office and warehouse properties, no. Office, industrial, medical, multifamily, like you mentioned, so we do all mall. We also do virtual tours and photography for multifamily. We have some of the top uh, multifamily teams who use us uh, for their collateral or for uh, services as well. Cool. Was, Anybody else got any questions? I'd love leading, to be, be of help if I can. Like uh, Andre, if I may ask, like, what's your, would you, ha would you say you have like some of the commercial sub classes, uh, like some of the commercial real estate classes, sort of in a more leading position for you guys that's bringing you more business? Can you repeat the question? I didn't really follow it. Would you say like, let's say warehouse or office or another CRE class is more of a leading business for you? No, the, it, it's all different. Um, it, it's funny. Um, multifamily is popular, but the amount of office space out there, it, it's high, but the, the, now lately the, the, the demand for office space has gone up, but it's actually, we don't, when we started, we started off with a niche and then over time we, we uh, supported all, all classes simply because it, it's just what brokers want. Mm -hmm. Got it. And what about markets? Like, um, how diversified are you across? The US? We're across the U.S. Yeah, so we're across the U.S. Um, when we started, we started very constrained. So we started in California. That was five and a half years ago. So of course, we have more history and traction in uh, California, Florida. We had expanded to Texas. We had expanded to Arizona and Washington. Uh, but we're nationwide, so it, it there isn't anything. I mean, it, it just took us a long, long time to reach out to all of the commercial real estate professionals and property owners to get their inventory on Digsy. Got it. Got it. Yeah, if you guys have any more questions, if you're feeling shy, feel free to put, put it on the chat or just speak up. So I have a question. So did you say that your properties that on Digsy are from all over the U.S.? It's not yes. just... That's correct. And also we have a, if you guys use, if any of you use build out, we have a, a syndication with build out. So you can also, if you turn on the syndication to Digsy, if you have your properties in build out, they'll automatically get populated into Digsy too. I should have mentioned that. And how do we get in touch with you guys uh, if we're interested? Yeah. So very simple. Uh, so uh, you guys can just go to our website or you can, you guys can just email sales at getdigsy.com. Or you can just email me directly, which is andrew at getdigsy.com. So that's G-E-T as in Tom, D as in dog, I-G-S-Y.com. Thank you. Ah, pleasure. Thank you for asking. So did you guys get uh, like Zero's <laughs> co-founder's attention, I guess? Or what, What's that? So did you guys get uh, the attention of like Silicon Valley investors like Zero? We did. Yeah, we have a we, we have several of them. Uh, yeah, it before we started the company, I had started a couple things before. So I had left brokerage and started a couple of technology companies that just after doing the market sizing, they weren't going to be that great. So I put those to bed. Um, and a lot of the relationships from doing my first fundraise for those companies, uh, I was able to connect with uh, people up north and hear people locally and also L.A. L.A. has a really, really good uh, ecosystem uh, over the years. Orange County has grown, too. And but, you know, various high concentration. So, for example, when I flew out to meet the former CEO of LoopNet, uh, one of my friends is Dennis DeAndre, who is the original founder of LoopNet. So he's you know, I met him in the Bay Area through a friend of mine. Uh, and he's given me great advice throughout the years. And he's just an epic dude, right? And then I had met um, Rich Boyle, who's a C e who was a CEO of Loopn at the time. Then met Tom, uh, who is now, he sold his company to, um, what was it called? It was a retail real estate thing, property capsule. He sold it to VTS.
So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all relationships really when it comes to this stuff and luck, we've been fortunate enough that people took a liking to us and have either mentored us or invested in the company. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, like, cause you went really well through the like lead generation sort of like, like being able to like build more leads to, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to people who post on your, on your platform and, you know, sort of increasing conversion rates and that. Like, would you say that that's your major kind of um, your main value add, like versus like your main competitive advantage? Uh, we have, so we have two distinct value adds. One is that we're not charging for you to list and market your properties online, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else charges. Uh, LoopNet has gotten very pricey for a lot of people. Uh, naturally, that was good for us because they started listing on Digsy and that's where a majority of the volume comes through. We have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of registrations uh, uh, per month. Let me just put it to you that way. Uh, but we had to reinvent ourselves. We had said, hey, you know, access, the data wants to be free. Uh, commercial real estate doesn't have an MLS. So how do we create a business model where we can make the data free, uh, we can let people post and consume the content for free and make a, a big business out of it. And what we found out was that you know, all of these things that uh, brokers and commercial real estate professionals and professionals, I mean, investors like yourself, Stefan, everybody else, um, there are things that are so hard to, to get access to that are high ticket items that are out of people's reach, but we were able to bring the economics down and you have a one-stop shop instead of me going on Google and trying to find a virtual tour photographer making phone calls or this, I can just literally just click a button and, or call my Digsy rep and say, hey, I need to shoot a 10,000 square footer or a 1500. Oh, 1500, that's gonna be 150 bucks. Uh, can we come out you know, next week? And then our team on the ground will go out and shoot those. And you know, whereas you, you just can't get that pricing anywhere. So we've created that network of people that work with us and then we control the output. So it's consistent and turns out it's, you know, just photography in the U S for real estate is, uh, is $12 billion a year. That's how, that's a total addressable market. And then for outsourced marketing services, just for the commercial real estate agent segment is 38 billion or 36 billion, big, big markets. You don't have to charge $600 a month for data uh, to make a lot of money in this business, you can actually just upend um, the property marketing properties online uh, simply because, you know, the one thing that we kept on hearing, and I think Mark, I think you and I had had a conversation about this one night uh, when we were chatting on the phone. It's good to see you here, by the way. I don't know that you're going to attend. Um, that for some reason, like even, even at its height, when, when LoopNet got acquired by CoStar, LoopNet was making $98 million dollars. But there were only really, the, the number that, that has been told to me by my sources is they were only, only about 10 to 12% of all the users were actually paying. And this is back when they were charging like 60 bucks a month. And it took a long time to get there. And then the leads, so that means a majority of the brokerage uh, of the commercial real estate profession is not using or paying for this platform. Turns out that the ones that we're paying uh, would cancel because uh, not all of them, but you know, big thing is they just don't value the leads coming from there. Landlords love them, but it's a it's a channel you have to tap into. So it doesn't make sense to go and try to monetize exposing your properties online, where you can just do add on like a turnkey. Like, dude, if I can go one place and I need a brochure, floor plan, property pictures, this that, and I want somebody to uh, handle my marketing or call on brokers and do that you've got a one central shop. So really it's all of these things that go to perform one task are all over the place and time consuming. And we found that that's actually the solution that we can build for the commercial real estate community. Awesome. Okay. And for- uh, Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> if there's no other questions, uh, I'll let you go on with your day. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I think uh, maybe I have just my last question actually. Yeah. So, you know, for, so for people who are investors like in our audience, okay. so. So you guys get the, a lot of the data on listings, right? And um, mm -hmm. so what would be your, like to, to the discussion we had with Mark before, like would you say, let's say above a given price point or, in, or within a certain niche or so, so forth that there is sort of your honest assessment of let's say that maybe, um, you know, things that end up on market are sort of, let's say the less desirable listings or something. No, no, no. I would say that when, like, like Mark said earlier, mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you have a client 
that will sell their property, but they don't want it to go out to the market. Maybe, and it could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe mm -hmm. they're having a dispute with a partner on, in the LLC. It could be something else where like, they don't want a single signal to their, to the investors in their fund that they're unloading a property because they maybe sometime told that we're never selling, we're holding, but they, they, they need to move that asset because there's a bigger opportunity. I mean, that's just like a few of like just a pool of, of the reasons why. And also, you know, you have conflicts of interest, like a broker uh, who doesn't have the exclusive listing may not want to put it online and let tell the world, hey, I've got a, I've got a seller because he, he or she wants to secure that investor to buy that asset. So I would say, no, the one thing though, that's interesting. Uh, and I think it, and it's something that, you know, we have to focus at our company. And right now we're in the mission of giving you a central place to get all these things done at a great cost and just easily. That's our mission right now. But I do see an opportunity for platforms like ours where because of the data we have, Imagine if I see an owner user building, right? Let's say me and you, Stefan, we want to buy a $10 million building. And let's say it's a multi-tenant building. And it's like, like let's say 30% occupied. And then you and I have access to the Digsy data. And we can see, oh, this tenant's looking for this here. This tenant's looking for that there. Oh, they're looking for this. Maybe, maybe they have a specific requirement, maybe refrigeration or something, or maybe they need a grease strap. And we're going to buy this property and we can do a build a suit for these individuals. Um, having that information, you know, we have the searches from the broker, we have the searches from the individuals themselves, the tenants and the buyers. There's a lot that you can do there. So I wouldn't be surprised that at some point in the future that Hello? more of the market goes towards making the search like we've been doing free. So listing and also consuming listings free because there's more upside in that listing service or that search engine partnering up with uh, a developer or an investor who can do build the suit opportunities. And that's where the money really is because mm -hmm. now you have the searcher data, you have the demand data and you're able to use the demand data to really arbitrage creative deals. Like for example, yep. we can buy a property, right? That it has a terrible cap rate because a, a, a portion of the, of, of the property is vacant and the seller knows and they're broke, their listing broker knows that. So they've discounted it. Right, but we already have tenants in our back pocket to do that, and it all well, we know is that we've already competed the amount of tenant improvements we have to do to lock that in. Mm -hmm. So I can I can see more and more of, of of these very very creative things, and it's 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 a lot more interesting the more that you peel like the opportunities that you can have behind platforms like this. It's but at what point you know do you um, at what point are you becoming anti competitive? You see what I'm saying? So let's say another developer wants to come into that platform and do the same thing that your first pilot customer to, you have the searcher data, let's go buy buildings and, and we already know the tenants that we can approach. Um, you know, when, when does it become that not, where you're, you're, you're not, you're not inviting competition, you get your, and you get, you know, in trouble with the federal trade commission, you know, it's going to be interesting models on that, but I think everything's changed right now. The data wants to be free. And for example, we share our data with like, if a broker says, Hey, uh, I want to send my data to CoStar. We don't care. Just send them the link to your profile. We don't care if they grab our data. We really don't. We just want to be, we, we, we just want to be the, 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 the aqueduct, the, the, the actual, um, the method of transmitting information. Andrew, what is the, have you studied the, the amount of, uh, or the percentage of um, end user inquiries, you know, either non-brokered or, you know, end user buyer, individual purchasers, or lease, you know, tenants in your yeah. site? Is it, is it, is it you know, because that was one of the, that was one of the portions of LoopNet that aggravated a lot of brokers, right? Yeah. So it, it's in the 90s. So 90s meaning what? It's in the 90, like percentage wise. So it's like 90 I would say between three to five percent of of uh, people searching on Digzy uh, are non brokers or non commercial real estate professionals. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Well, actually, yeah, it's a small amount because they're they you guys are already using CoStar. You know, what do you need us? Ninety percent, did you say? Yeah, our tenants and buyers. So, so they're end users. How did you find when you called the uh, owners? How did they receive your calls? So it's a, it's um, 
It's a good question. Uh, we tried a lot of things. Uh, the usual suspects that you want to go after, first of all, are the brokers, the CBREs, the JLLs, so the people who control most of the most of the of the inventory. Then you want to go to like the regionals, right? Like you want to go to the Keller Williams. You want to go to uh, to the Void commercials. You want to go to um, okay. anybody else. Then um, as properties get listed, then we've also uh, we also have because we have these email addresses that go to attach to a listing. Then these brokers start getting notifications. Hey, these new listings were added to that. Then they start creating awareness from that. And people start talking. Then uh, we also did the partnership with Buildout which we did, a, I want to say a couple of years ago, and they, you know, their brokers can actually syndicate over to us, but it was just hard work. You go after the 80% that, you know, has the inventory. And then, uh, then after a while, like now just people hear about us or do a Google search and they list on our website. So, okay. but it's, so it's hard work. It's, it's, that's the chicken of the egg problem. That's the hardest part of work. Yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. I know it, it's, a, it's extremely hard. Marketplaces are very, very hard. Think about this. Think, think about when we first started virtual tours and photography, we started in Orange County, California, right? Mm -hmm. This was a little bit over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, how, do you, how do you build this same thing and keep your economics uh, attractive internally and also to the investors in our company and keep the cost down for commercial real estate professionals to go shoot this? You know, how do you, how do you recruit photographers? Like, how do you do that? You got payroll tax, you get all this other stuff. Well, I can't talk about what we did, but um, it was a very hard problem. So not only was, did we go over a problem of getting all, getting people to listen to our website. Now we have to find photographers and now we have to find virtual tour people. And then when we started offering the, the, mar the outsource marketing services, like how do you find people to be able to give them $10 an hour to a customer? So there's a lot of magic that happens behind the scenes. Some of it works, some of it, no, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of projects and experiments that we've had to take out back and, you know, <laughs> put it down because it just, it, 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 the economics don't make sense and it's unscalable. Okay. Good. Thank you for, thank you for answering. Yeah, no problem. All right. So here's, unless any, does anybody else have any questions? I'm happy to answer anything. How are you sleeping? I'm not. I, he, he's asking because I just had a. I, I told you, Stefan, right before we jumped on with everybody, I just had a baby five weeks ago. Yeah, it's. Uh, we're not. She just. She. She was good the first few days, but uh, lately she's just not. It took us like four hours to put her to bed yesterday. She's just going through some. I don't know what she's doing, but she's definitely making it worthwhile. But I just love that little girl. So it's just. Yeah. It's the best time, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. So, Stefan, I'll I'll send you I'll send you the deck. So I'll email it over to you. So that way, if anybody wants it, or if you want to link, if you want to link to it on the on the show notes on the YouTube on the YouTube recording. Yeah, let me just I'm putting in my email right now for you guys. So you can email email me here or or just email uh, under the uh, directly. Yeah, I'll uh, send it over so, to you. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And All right. Uh, so if yeah. uh, okay, cool, awesome. Oh, there it is. Well, I'm going to add Esther on here. Andrew, before we wrap up, so in theory, like what percentage of stuff, uh, of, sorry, what percentage of properties you believe are sort of data democratized? You know, like when the data democrat, I'm really like kind of passionate about this topic. Like it's for how much of the data actually gets out there, you know, so versus like remains in, in agent, agents. I would say the majority of it. I, I, would, I would, the the amount of data that's not, listed online it is yeah. very few uh, if, if you if now if you select investments let's say above 10 million if you have like really i would say anything above 10 million your a majority of the investments will be shopped internally yeah exactly first before it goes out that's why it's really important if i'm an investor all i want to do is just know who like the most active brokers uh and investors are in 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 my asset class or my investment criteria partner up with those guys and then just talk to them, add value, help them out. You help me out. Make sure that you have, you're in the good graces with the broker so that they can, they can give you access or they can introduce you to the fund. I mean, if I can't buy the property myself, but I really want that asset, I would, uh, I would say, dude, can you introduce me to the investor? Because I really, I want to put in some money in that fund. This sort of this data democratization, like getting more of like sort of, let's say now having what 10% of the 10% of properties listed and everything else shut basically shuffled between brokers. Is that the case? You know, like, so you see, that is the big, like, big, uh, you know, 
guys in the industry? I wish I had the answer to that. It's hard to say. Um, I, I know for a fact that if uh, properties will get shopped internally first mm -hmm. before they hit the market, especially above 10 million. And nobody wants to spend the time putting a marketing package to, or not even a mark. You, you're going to do the marketing package, but nobody wants to put it on the market and feel calls when they can just make three or four phone calls uh, and sell it and have both sides of the commission. So that's, that's one thing is it, it's, it's a hard problem, to fight, but it's, it's definitely a problem solved through networking. And if I was an investor today, all I would do is network, identify the top brokers that represent the assets that I, in the, in the price ranges that I do and just, Take I mean, them out to dinner, get to know them, get to know other investors who invest in the same thing and just chat. Just have like a one once a week, once every two week call and find out, hey, what are you seeing in the market? Oh, this asset is coming to market. You know, this John Doe over at New Marks running with it. So it, it, everything happens behind the scenes. Yeah, but uh, hopefully it does change in the future. Though. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, it's the same thing in venture capital. Think about it, right? I mean, you guys ever heard of us raising money? I just oversubscribed my round of funding that I'm doing right now and I haven't even opened it yet. Yep, I agree. So okay. that, that's, I mean, when it comes to these private investments, that, that's always gonna be the, the problem, right? So, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hi, sorry, I missed part of the presentation. I'm piping in now. <laughs> uh, you have a fund? No, I was just saying. I was just saying. I would network with people that 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 have a fund. If I wanted to get access to properties that aren't hitting the market, I was just giving Stefan just uh, an idea of where I would spend my time to do that. Because I mean, those properties aren't. I mean, think about the deals, right, um, Stefan? That happen in New York, right? The hedge fund deals, right? They're not talking about <laughs> what they're investing in because they don't want their, the other hedge funds to know. But is there a way you guys can incentivize them as a sort of, or like platforms like Wolf can incentivize? You know, them? everything, Change that every more. problem, every problem will be solved at some point in time. Right. It just depends how many times you turn and you, and you, and you keep on turning it. We haven't really given it much thought, um, but it's definitely something that, that interests me. So let me think about it and go back to you. Yeah. yeah so I'm actually a realtor um, and I most, almost like 99% of what I do is offline. Um, most of my clients, when they hear on the market, they're like, just don't even send it. And it's silly because sometimes. Sorry, I just got a call. Yeah, um, you got there. For a property that's on the market, but it's it's a thing to buy something yeah. off. It's just people yeah. don't want to compete. Yeah, they don't want to be competing with other people. Yeah, and I'm actually also starting a fund. So. Oh, you are? Cool. Yeah. Yes. Congrats. What property types? What property types do you specialize in, this, Esther? Um, so I specialize in a lot of things by now. I I'm a realtor, so I've transacted in most assets. I'm investing myself in the industrial office and triple net space. Nice. Um, yeah, we have a lot under contract at the moment. Um, and then I I decided to start raising um, capital for other investments. So. I don't really have a specific asset that I'm doing. I, I'm not doing retail or hotel at the moment. <laughs> um, um, but uh, any asset that makes sense, uh, mm -hmm. the numbers, location, and I vet the sponsor. Sponsor has to have a you know, record. You know what? Actually, my friend, uh, do you know Jesse Limon over at, um, over at Marcus and Melochap? It sounds familiar. He's got an interesting asset. Um, mm -hmm. I'll connect the two. I'll, I'll add you on LinkedIn and... Uh, uh, and I'll connect with you that way. He's got an interesting asset that you may want to take a look at. I'm not sure if you invest in that type of stuff um, uh, that, that he's got. So I'll, uh, it's a triple net investment. So I'll, I'll reach out to you, Stefan, about it as well. But that might be something you may want to look at. Thank you. There's no, no limit money-wise, but we want, like, obviously a higher cap long-term leases, obviously. Who thanks. doesn't, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's hard to find, but... Uh, we, we partnered with somebody that acquired over $700 million of commercial real estate. So a lot of, what I'm not bringing in, a lot of brokers are bringing to our partner. That is awesome. So, yeah. So That's things so are cool. coming, you know, even high caps, but we're always looking for more. Yeah. Cool. Now, Esther, Esther, your fund, like your fund's mandate is to invest in other people's sort of syndications. Exactly. Or your own syndication, just making So I have to join the syndication in order to legally raise yeah. or, you know, I join as a yeah. 
GP, whatever, manage, uh, asset manager. Um, so I need, it's officially mine. But, yeah. Um, but yes, I'm partnering with others to raise. Yes, I'm starting the fund. I'm like just trying to figure out which attorney I'm going to work with. I've spoken to like nine of them over the last few days and everyone says something else. So it's a little confusing. Um, but I, I have a deal. I have a deal. I should write a book on it. I have a deal that I'm going to be raising um, for. It's a $9 million raise. So uh, once once um, once I'm under contract, I'll go live. And where That's are you? So cool. Where are you located? I'm in New York. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And where are the, like, the, the deals that you're working at? Like what kind of geographies, Esther? Uh, nationwide, as long as the deal makes sense. Like, is it like Florida, Texas primarily, or others? Well, now most buyers are looking there, but believe it or not, like the, the quieter markets now are picking up because everything is, uh, you know, everyone's in Florida and Texas, and they're That's forgetting right. about all the other markets. Yeah. Um, so they're picking up now. Like, uh, you see people going to Chicago, and um, I heard you speak about LA, so I'm sure you know LA um, better than I do. Um, yeah, but it's interesting. Yeah, so this particular property is going to be in is in Indianapolis. Um, but I have several that I have a built to rent that I'm going to be raising for um, in Texas. Mm -hmm. Whatever deal makes sense, uh, people want to invest in. Whatever I'm investing in, in my fund as well. So wh whichever deal I am telling others to invest in, I'm going to be putting my money as well. So I have to believe in the deal. Awesome, great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining today. And thank you, Andrew. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. This is a blast. Good to see you. Yeah, pleasure. And thanks to all of you. Uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn. Andrew Bermudez. I'm happy to answer any questions off. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye-bye.